Hey everybody, it's Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Roadmaster Anti-Sway Bar on our 2020 Coachman Pursuit Motorhome. Now an Anti-Sway Bar is definitely going to help out with that really soft feeling we get when we're driving our motorhome. Driving down the road, and let's face it, we've got a lot of area for the wind to catch. It's really big, kind of top heavy. So when we do have a big vehicle drive by or a crosswind, it ends up pushing us and we get that top heavy swaying feeling. Or if we're going through a turn, definitely, I'm sure you've noticed that when you take a turn, the motorhome typically wants to lean and then turn. That can be a little spooky, definitely feels a little unnerving almost like you don't have as much control as you should. So then we end up feeling a little bit nervous, having a really tight grip on the steering wheel, and we can't really relax. Not to mention everybody in the back's probably getting tossed around. And the whole point of having a motorhome is to be able to go out on the road, see places we haven't seen, and enjoy ourselves with our friends and family. So before we put our parts on, we wanna get a nice baseline run. So we're gonna go through our test course and go over some of the symptoms that we're having. Now I'm gonna come up to the the bumps course here and we're going to go over the bumps right about five miles an hour now the bumps are going to give us a whole lot of feedback because that's going to be more of an up and down action but there are alternating speed bumps which is definitely going to help out with that twisting action and that rolling feeling and even the steering wheel when it starts to go to the left and the right so you can definitely feel and see that swaying going on and these I'm again I'm only going about five miles an hour it's not like I'm speeding through these, but it's got a lot of a mushy feeling. And even after the bumps are over, we kind of continue to rock a little bit. Not to mention, the steering wheel is kind of having to kind of grab it, get it back to center, make sure I'm going straight. And all of those things definitely can happen while you're driving down the road, because these are speed bumps, but the same type of thing would happen if you hit a pothole. But now we're gonna come up to our slalom course in our slalom course, I'm going to be going in and out of the turns about 10 miles an hour again so we get a nice baseline run. And as I'm going through the first couple turns here, honestly, I don't know if I really want to go much more than 10 miles an hour because it does. It just feels very loose and like I genuinely kind of need to slow down. And again, it has that really big leaning feeling to almost where... It almost feels like it's really top heavy and it wants to lean and then turn, which is kind of nerve wracking to be honest. I can only imagine what it's like when you're doing about 60, 65 going down the highway. And don't get me wrong, it's not horrible. It's not to the point to where I wouldn't want to drive it at all, but it's definitely a very soft feeling. I don't feel as in control as I would like to. So again, I got a firm grip on the steering wheel and even just sitting here going through the parking lot, I'm a little tensed up. So over a really long period of time, I could imagine that this would not be very enjoyable to drive. And really, again, the whole point of having a motorhome is so that we can use it. So if we can alleviate a lot of those symptoms, make ourselves a little bit more comfortable driving, that would be a great thing so that we can get on the road and enjoy ourselves with our friends and family. So now that we have our components installed, we're gonna take our motorhome back out of the test course and see what kind of improvements we got out of it. But already just going through the parking lot, it already feels a little bit more stable, especially right during this strip right here. It's a little uneven and it tended to rock a little bit as we were driving coming up to the course. Over the initial bumps, solid bumps, so we're not getting a whole lot of twisting yet. But here we start coming up to the alternating ones. And you can, you can still feel a little bit of a sway, but it's nowhere near as bad. And the steering wheel really isn't moving too much to where I have to really worry about it. I can relax a little bit, go over the bump, and it's kind of stopped swaying once you get over that initial bump. Whereas before we were just floating around like we were on a boat. It's a lot more stable, it's a lot easier to handle. I don't have to be so nervous going over and kind of seeing what's happening with the steering wheel. I can just relax and just drive like normal. So here's what our anti-sway bar looks like once we have it fully installed. Now you're going to notice that we still have the factory anti-sway bar on the front of our axle and that's because our rear sway bar is not meant to replace it, it's just meant to help support that in addition to the factory bar. So this definitely is going to really help reduce that body roll and swaying feeling because it's going to be directly attached to the rear axle and the frame. So anytime we get that shift in weight, 
it's going to use the weight of the axle to keep it nice and straight opposed to start rolling and twisting side to side. The bar itself is gonna be extremely durable. It's made out of a 4140 chrome molly steel, so it's not gonna have a whole lot of deflection or bending to it. Now, another thing to help out with the stiffness and the support that it's gonna give us is the fact that it uses all polyurethane bushings. Now, those are gonna have very little bit of deflection to them as well, but they are gonna be lubricated, so they're gonna provide us just enough of rotation and flex so that when we do turn, our suspension still has enough room to move, but it gives us the support when we need it to and allow us to articulate our suspension when we need it to at the same time. The bar itself is gonna be an inch and a half in diameter. And when you add that to the existing sway bar that's already there, we're gonna get a lot of support back here and really, really minimize the amount of sway we're getting. Because a lot of times, especially in the back, we end up getting a decent amount of sway and it feels like it's pushing us around, especially if you flat tow a vehicle, because that's a lot of weight in the back. And once that starts pushing the back around, it starts to push the front around and we end up having to fight the steering wheel. And again, we're exhausted by the time we get where we're going. This is definitely gonna cut down on all of those things because it's gonna make sure that our rear axle stays nice and level. And as we go in and out of the turns, again, it's gonna use the weight of the axle to brace itself and prevent that weight shifting and that really mushy feeling that we get. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is pretty straightforward. But keep in mind, the bar is pretty heavy, so I always recommend having another set of hands with you so they can help you lift it up. And the thing I do like about it is the fact that our tires don't have to come off the ground in order to get it installed. We can do the entire process with the tires still on the ground. In fact, let's go and walk through that process together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. To start our installation, we want to park our motorhome on a nice flat level surface. We want to use our leveling jacks to lift up our motorhome so that we have a little bit more room to work with. Then we're going to come to the rear wheel well and we're going to look directly inside right to the frame. If we look right into the frame rail on the back side of our tires, we'll see that we have four bolts right by our leaf spring. We need to pull out the two lower bolts. Now, fortunately, there is a keeper nut on the inside of the frame, but there's a tab so we don't have to hold it with a wrench or anything. The easiest way I found is if you take a long extension and a 21 millimeter socket, typically you can get an impact gun in there, and we're going to pull both of those bolts out. Now you may run into, if you're using that extension, it's actually reducing the amount of torque you're putting on the bolt. So if you're having trouble getting it loose, if you can get your impact wrench to fit inside, you're better off not using the extension and just using your arm to reach. So we're going to grab our frame bracket out of our kit. It'll be an L shape with two tabs coming down. Now that L shape with the two holes here, that's gonna go directly against the frame and those holes are gonna match up with the bolts we just removed and this section is gonna be right on the bottom. So we can move underneath or into the wheel well. We wanna resecure it using the factory bolts and those keeper nuts on the inside of the frame. So lift up our bracket, make sure we line up the holes. Pass our bolts through. I like to get both the bolts kind of just loosely in place, so not to worry about the bracket falling down, kind of hold itself up. And then on the inside of the frame, if these didn't fall out, they're probably sitting on the inside of the frame, but little, that little tab is gonna hit the frame so that we can keep tightening it up and we don't have to use a wrench. And get these loosely started by hand, we can come back and tighten it up with the socket. With this bracket in place, we're going to move over to the other side of the frame. We're going to have those same two bolts, so we're going to put the other one in on the passenger side. Now 
Now if we move to the back side of the rear axle, we'll find our shock mounts and the hardware that's holding our shocks in place. We need to pull our shock, the lower shock bolts out so we can actually get access to behind it because we have a couple holes on this shock mount that we need to get to. Now, we're gonna wanna grab a inch and one eighth socket and an inch and one eighth wrench and pull that bolt nut and hold on to all the hardware. Again, you wanna make sure you hold on to the bolt, the washers, and the nut. And then once you have the shock loose, you can just grab it. And for now, kinda of wanna just push it out of the way as much as you can, even if you do just turn it so that you can get access behind the shock here. Now, if you look inside that shock mount, you'll see that we have two holes, one towards the axle, what I'll say is up top, and then one towards the ground on the bottom. For the top hole, we want to grab a 3 8 bolt out of our kit. We're going to follow it up with a flat washer. And we want to go from the inside, pointing out, going towards the ground. Now, it is a little bit tight, but typically you can either push or thread that bolt in to get it to go all the way through. Once you get a little bit of it sticking out, typically you can grab it with your fingers, but it will be a little bit tight. You just want to thread it in to start. And we should be able to work it the rest of the way through so it's completely coming out. Now for the lower hole, it's going to be a different piece of hardware. This time we want to grab the cap screw that's in our kit. Now we're also going to have a few washers that are cut. We want to use that washer so that it doesn't interfere with our shock when it goes back into place. Because that lower hole is really close to this radius edge on our shock. So we're going to put this bolt in the lower hole. Just want to make sure that that washer is sitting to where the flat section is going towards the bottom so it will clear the shock. And again, it's kind of tight, so you can just typically turn your finger, get it to start thread through, and then we'll grab the bottom of it to get, make sure it goes all the way through. And if you're having a little bit of trouble getting it to turn with your finger, you can grab a 7 seconds Allen socket and we can use that to turn the bolt. Again, you just may have to move your shock out of the way a little bit. To make it a little bit easier for us to get a grip on it and start threading it in. With this shock done and the hardware in place, we're going to move over to the other one and use that same combination of hardware and put it in place as well. So at this point, we can grab our bar, and I like to do it underneath the motorhome because it prevents me from having to move this heavy bar as many times. We also want to grab the bushings and the saddle clamps. Saddle clamps are just going to slide right over the bushing. Should be able to just pull them right off. But our bushings are split bushings, so we are going to be able to open them up. That way we can slide them over the bar a little bit easier. But before we put them in place, we want to make sure we use the lubricant that comes with our kit. And that's just going to prevent any kind of squeaking in case any kind of moisture or water gets in between the bushing and the bar. I definitely recommend wearing gloves because this grease can be very messy. But we want to take a good amount and we're just going to coat the entire inside of that bushing. Once we have a good amount inside, right at this curved section on the bar, we're going to open our bar bushing, open it up, slide it over the bar. Be a little stiff sometimes. Slide it over the bar. Then we want to take our saddle clamp. And we're going to go right over the top of that bushing. Now we want to put the other bushing on the other side, and then. I do recommend getting an extra set of hands because we're not lifting it that high, but the bar is extremely heavy. So once we get the other bushing in, I would, again, suggest getting an extra set of hands to help you lift it up. Now we're going to lift our bar up and we're going to line up the holes and the bolts that we put through on our saddle clamp. Make sure we line them up 
that the hardware goes through. And that lubricant on the bushing is definitely going to help out with sliding everything around. So once we get it lifted in position, I want to make sure the hardware is coming through. And then on that top bolt, where we had that 3 8 bolt come through the shock mount, I want to put another flat washer. And for now, we're just going to loosely secure it with a 3 8 lock nut. Now you want to at least get one bolt on each side started. That way the bar will hold itself up and we can work on getting the rest of it in place. I will let you know it can be a little difficult to get them started just because there's grease everywhere and you are trying to hold the weight of the bar and get the hardware started. So that's definitely why it helps to have an extra set of hands. Now for our lower mounting point where we had that button head screw come through, I'm going to grab another one of those cut washers because we have, again, that radius on that saddle clamp that we need to clear. So you just want to make sure that the washer goes flat against the shock mount. And again, we'll use a lock nut to secure it down. Now that's going to be the same combination for the other side, so we'll get that in place as well. To tighten up the hardware, on the top here, I'm going to use a 916 socket for the bolt and a 916 wrench to hold the nut. Now for the bottom bolt, I'm actually going to use that 916 socket on the nut and to hold that bolt still, I'm going to use my ratchet and a 732nd Allen's bit to hold the bolt still. Once we have this all the way tightened up, we're going to move to the other side and repeat that process. Now we can take our shock and put it back into the mount. Make sure everything's lined up. And grab our bolts. Pass it through the mount. Make sure it goes all the way through. It can be a little bit tight sometimes. Either you need to thread it through, or you tab it with a hammer, or if you just get a little bit of the threads coming through, we can get the nut started. Don't forget to put the washer in place. Get the nut loosely started. We'll grab our wrench and socket and tighten everything up. We'll move to the other side and put the other shock in place as well. We're going to grab our end links. One end will have several holes in it. The other end will have a bushing through it. The end, the end with the bushing is going to go up, and we're going to line up the holes in that frame bracket that we installed at the beginning with the holes in the bushing. Then we want to grab the large bolt out of our kit. And we're coming from the outside towards the tire, we're going to pass the bolt all the way through the bracket, the bushing, and out the other side. Now you do want to make sure that the bolt's coming from the outside going in and we'll put the nylon lock nut on the inside. Now that's just to make sure that our leaf springs aren't going to interfere with the bolt so that way it's going to be close enough to the inside and all the excess will be underneath the motor hull. At this point though, we want to put the other side in Go ahead and clear out all your tools and we're going to lower our motor home down so that we can get our sway bar in the correct position and make sure we mount it in the correct hole. So now that we have the full weight of our motor home on the ground, we want to rotate our bar. Make sure you have your hardware ready because it's, it is attached but it's still a little heavy. But we're going to grab one of the long bolts, we're going to rotate our sway bar up and you want to get it to where this end bar here that's going from front to back is nice and level or as level as we can get it. So this is kind of pointing down. This is pretty good, but this looks pretty much dead level to me. So I'm going to use the top hole on our shackle mount here. And again, coming from the outside going towards the inside, we'll pass the bolt through and then we'll secure it down with the nylon lock nut. Now you do want to make sure that you use the same hole on both sides so you don't get your sway bar in a weird bind or having a twist. So we'll go ahead and put the other bolt in on that top hole as well. 
And when we go to tighten up our bolts here, we want to use a 24 millimeter socket and wrench. You can also use a 15 16 socket and wrench. But when we do tighten it up, we only want to tighten it up to where there's just a little bit of pressure on those bushings. We don't want to crush them. So we'll tighten it up again just enough to where it kind of squeezes just barely and applies pressure to those bushings. Once you have all your hardware in place, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and test drive your motorhome, make sure there's nothing moving around, and double check the tightness of all the bolts that we just installed. But once you've done that, that'll finish up your look and your installation of the Roadmaster Rear Anti-Sway Bar on our 2020 Code Twin Pursuit motorhome.